In this video, we will learn about pancreatic cysts. These are increasingly being diagnosed when scans are performed for other reasons. We'll find out what they are, what symptoms they cause, how are these investigated, and what are the broad treatment outlines for the more common cysts. Here's a cartoon to understand where is the pancreas and what are its broad functions. This is the gullet, and if you have anything to eat, it will come down into the stomach. The stomach will churn it over and pass it down into the small bowel. The liver produces bile, which comes down the bile tube and enters the small bowel. The back of the stomach is the gland called the pancreas. The pancreas produces enzymes and these are passed through small tubules into the main pancreatic tube or the main pancreatic duct and they also meet with the food over here and break the food down and it's responsible for 90% of the digestion. The definition of a cyst is a sac that is filled with fluid. Within the body, a true cyst is the one that is a sac that has a lining called epithelium and it is filled with fluid. Now let's look at what types of cysts do we commonly encounter. Of those that are found on scans performed for other reasons, only 0.01% turn out to be significant. The rest are benign. There are three main types of pancreatic cysts. Inflammatory or pseudocysts. As I'd explained previously, these are not true cysts. They do not have a lining. And when pancreas is inflamed with pancreatitis, it can cause fluid to collect, which forms scar tissue around it, and that is a pseudocyst. Then there are pancreatic cystic neoplasm, which are primarily of two main types types. The benign type called the serous and the, those with malignant potential IPMN are very commonly described. As you can see from the structure of the pancreas there are these tiny tubules that drain into the main pancreatic duct. When the side branch gets blocked with mucin then it can form a cyst that is called a side branch IPMN, intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasm. And the differentiating feature within the cysts with malignant potential is that they have mucin, that's a thick viscid fluid. If the side branch IPMN is less than two centimeters and does not have other features of malignancy, then they are just followed up with imaging or surveillance. Mucinous cystic neoplasm is a cyst that forms within the pancreas, more commonly in the in women and has significant malignant potential, is typically not connected to the pancreatic ductal system and has mucin within it. And when diagnosed and if the patients are fit for surgery, then removal is the best treatment. Finally, pancreatic pseudopapillary tumor or solid tumors tend to occur in women in their 30s and they do have a low malignant potential and they need to be removed once discovered. The third type are the cancerous cysts. Any of these three Three, if they turn cancerous, they will have features both of the cyst as well as of a cancer that is a solid tumor. And finally, pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma may cause blockage of a cyst and have an associated cyst next to a more solid component. As I mentioned before, by far the great majority of the cysts discovered incidentally are of the benign nature. Some of these, such as the side branch IPMN, may require further follow-up and surveillance. What kind of symptoms should one expect from pancreatic cysts? The great majority do not cause any symptoms and are discovered incidentally. If they are large, such as in the case of a pseudocyst, then they can cause pain, which can be quite significant in the upper abdomen radiating through to the back. There can be nausea and vomiting. This can cause pressure. If they are large enough, they can cause compression of the bile tube or rarely a blockage of the bowel beyond the stomach. Some cysts such as IPMN can trigger pancreatitis. Some malignant cysts can block the main pancreatic tube and then trigger pancreatitis. And finally, there can be symptoms due to the malignant transformation of the cyst, behaving like cancer of the pancreas, either within the pancreas or through the metastases. So how are pancreatic cysts investigated? Typically, this is by way of scans or endoscopic ultrasound. For scans to be effective, specifically the CT scan, it has to be performed with a pancreas protocol contrast scan. Additionally, MRI, the MRCP provides additional information. The scans delineate the size, location, connection to the main pancreatic tube, whether or not these are responsible for pressure symptoms and the morphology of the cyst, the kind of the cyst and the likely diagnosis. Within a cyst, there could be some worrisome features on the scan, such as wall thickness, solid components within the cyst, the contrast being taken up by the wall of the cyst, solid debris within the cyst. All of these may suggest malignancy or malignant potential. In this MRI scan, we can see two small cysts outlined over here 
that are side branch IPMN of a small size. This is a CT scan of a pseudocyst, which is entirely benign, but it is quite large. Endoscopic ultrasound means a flexible tube that is passed down from the mouth through the gullet into the stomach and it parks itself right next to the pancreas gland. It has an ultrasound transducer attached at the tip that takes very detailed pictures and a needle can stick out of it to draw fluid from it for analysis as well as take biopsy. The cyst fluid that is withdrawn is assessed for tumor marker, amylase, glucose levels, and molecular markers. What we are trying to differentiate is whether this is a mucinous which are typically associated with malignant, with malignant potential, or a non-mucinous, non-cancerous type cyst. It can also comment on cyst morphology and the true diagnosis based on appearance. Hence, the EUS over the last couple of decades has become an invaluable tool in the true diagnosis of pancreatic cysts. It's important to point out that only patients recognized as having potentially cancerous cysts would be candidates for an EUS, which is only a small proportion of those diagnosed. So in terms of treatment of pancreatic cysts, the great majority will lead to no action once they have been diagnosed as benign or if the patient is completely unfit for any surgical intervention. A group of patients will undergo surveillance which means regular scans at intervals to see how the cyst changes. These cysts typically will have malignant potential such as the side branch IPMN. The caveat is that the patient has to be fit for surgery if surveillance is to be under undertaken long term. And finally, surgery, which involves removal of the part of the pancreas, if there is significant malignant potential at presentation, or whether it's unclear whether malignancy is already present. And finally, if they are truly malignant that are present alongside uh, cancer, in that case, in a fit patient, surgical removal should be undertaken. This completes a brief overview of the pancreatic cyst. Please consult with your healthcare provider in your specific situation. The purpose of this video is for information only. If you have any comments, please do share.